Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over an AutoGen update. They have recently made updates to one of the more advanced things about AutoGen and that's function calling. And I'll go over with you how it was and now how an updated version, which is 0.2.3, how it changes and it's a little bit easier and less code. So let's dive in and get started. All right, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna show you an example of how it was done before and then how it's done now. And so it'll be all listed in my GitHub, which you can find in the description below and it'll be under the autogen functions directory. How functions did work is first off, we need the config list. Okay, so in this example, I'll be doing it two different ways. So in the original example, I used OAI config list as the environment uh, or file, which you can see here. And then I just filtered it out to get the GPT-4 model. Then the next thing is you need to have your LLM config object. And in here, whenever you start using functions, well, let's backtrack for a second. First, you need the config list and timeout, okay? Those are two uh, properties of this object that you need. And then if you were using functions, you also need to have the functions property here. And this would be an array because you could have more than one. And the name here would be the name of the function. And then the description is about what the function is supposed to do. And then for the parameters of the function, you would always set this type to be object. And then the properties, these are really, um, these are the actual names of the properties and the types of those uh, parameters from the function. So for instance, in this function, we're gonna have a base amount, a base currency, and a quote currency that we're going to give the function, it'll do something with it. All right, then for each one, you give it the type, and then just, just a description for each parameter. And then you would have a required here, which told which would tell the function, okay, these, these parameters of the function need to be here or else it's not going to do it or I'm not going to run it and it's not going to work. So then we would define the function. So right here it is currency calculator, right? This was the name up here, currency calculator. That's the name of the function. Okay. So when we come back down here again, it required three parameters. So the base amount, base currency and quote currency. And what were we going to, what we were going to return is a string. So the quote amount is going to be this, this, in-house function that we created called exchange rate. So it's going to take this exchange rate and then return back a float parameter, which is the quote amount. So we give it the base currency, the quote currency, and then we're going to multiply that by the base amount. And then we just return a formatted string of the currency. And then what you would do is you have two bots. I have a currency bot and then the user proxy bot. So I have a user proxy agent and an assistant agent. And in order to connect the function to whichever agent you wanted to, which couldn't be the user, uh, which couldn't be the user proxy agent. So for instance, it would normally be an assistant agent. The, the LLM config, you would set that to the LLM config where you set the function to. So for instance, here, the functions uh, property of this LLM config is set here. So it would know that whenever we start or initiate the chat, that whenever it gets to the this chat bot or this currency bot, that it's gonna run the functions. And then we would register the function with the user agent. And I know that kind of seems like, well, why would you register the function to the user agent whenever it should be registered to the assistant agent that's actually gonna run it? Well, the only way it runs is if we register the function in the first place. And so whenever we're chatting, like say if we had a group chat and we're chatting with multiple different agents, whenever it gets to the agent that has the LLM config, for this function that's registered to the user, it would know, okay, let's have that assistant agent or that other agent, because I have the registered function here, I know that I'm waiting for an assistant agent to that has this, and then I'm gonna have that agent execute the function um, in turn. And then finally, we initiate the chat. But now whenever we'd go to run this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Python 3 in the autogen function example py. So when I go to run this, it's just gonna um, go through go through the process and eventually it's going to get to uh, executing the function here where it says currency calculator. So the user proxy to the currency bot, it wants, uh, it wants the currency bot because the LLM config is tied to this function for that bot, it knows to run it. Okay. So the response that we get back is uh, the conversion. Uh, so then the currency bot is going to send back to the user agent. Well, one twenty-three hundred twenty-three dollars and forty-five cents in USD is approximately one hundred thirteen dollars and twenty-six cents in euros, and it doesn't seem super intuitive. I understand, even for like for me, whenever I was first doing this, I'm like, just something, something doesn't seem quite right about this, right? Uh, but now I'm going to show you the new way in Autogen zero point two point three update 
that it uses decorators and it's less code. So let's get into that. Now with the update of 0.2.3, the first thing is this is a different way. You can load the .env. So in this .env file, I would have a model property and an open AI API key property. And that would just retrieve it here. Okay, so the config list, this, this is the same way we've done all of our autogen functions. There's a couple different ways to do it, but this is one of them. This is the one that I like personally. Uh, but then for the LLM config, as you can see, it's, all, it's already different, right? We have functions in this file, but we only had the config list and timeout necessary for the LLM config, whereas previously we had to put all the function properties and parameters here. And it was kind of a lot, especially if you had like, imagine if you had quite a few functions, this is just a huge list, right? Okay, so that's different. We don't need to do that here anymore. These are the same. These are the two bots, the same exact currency bot and the same exact user proxy agent. And we come down here to the exchange rate. This is the in-house function that gets used as part of the currency calculator. The logic here is the same, nothing's changed. When we get down to the currency calculator function, this is where things have changed. This is the same exact function. I do use the annotated, um, I, this allows me to give the exact type to the parameter, but this is not needed, right? You can just do what it did in the previous example. It's gonna work the same. But as you can see here, we have two decorators. The first one is at user proxy. So I'm getting the at, I'm getting the user proxy agent but I'm saying at user underscore proxy, and I want to register for execution. So this is saying for this function, I want to basically register it just like we did over here in the previous example, right? This is the same thing, except uh, we don't have to directly uh, call this and have this function map here. We can just have this decorator over the function saying, hey, I'm going to register, register this for the user proxy. And then we say at currency underscore bot, we want to register this for this bot's LLM. So instead of having all of the parameters, the properties, the types for the parameters, uh, descriptions for the parameters, instead we can just say, okay, I want to register this function to that specific agent. And all we need, all you need here is the description for the function. And that's it. We get rid of so much code. So we don't need, we don't need all of this, all of this right here. We got rid of that and basically added it right here. And that's it. And everything else is the same. And if we go to run this now, the autogen function example decorators.py, this is gonna give us the same output. It's gonna run the exact same way. It's just less code for us to worry about. Okay, so we ask the question, we initiate the chat. That's the, that's also the exact same. The currency bot to the user proxy says, okay, this is the suggested function call currency calculator. These are the arguments. And then the user proxy to the currency bot. Okay, now we're gonna execute the function. This is the exact same, right? This is the exact same uh, convert conversion to euros. And we get the same exact output here and that's it. So like I said, the output and all that isn't, hasn't changed. It's just how we tell the agents who who the function is assigned to and how we register the function to the user agent. All right, so I know this was a quick video. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, but I think this is a nice update using decorators for the function calling in Autogen. It helps make it a little bit more sense whenever you can have the agent as a decorator above the function that it's assigned to. And then just know that you always have to register the functions to the user agent. Here's my GitHub, It'll, a link for it will be in the description. By the time you see this video, I'll have the updates here so you can play around with the new way to function call. And if you haven't yet, you can sign up for my newsletter, which I'll also have as a link in the description. All I do is every Sunday at noon, I send out a newsletter where it tells, it'll tell you what I did the previous week, what I'm gonna do the next week, and then maybe some uh, AI news that I found interesting. And then also anything that gave me trouble that I'm still working on uh, to hopefully fix for you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.